Salut à tous, it's Daniel. Welcome to this new week. Today I propose to you a damaged asphalt. We'll start with a simple basis, a bitonal blending of gravel and tar, then a worn part which comes with a mask. The big cracks and the smaller ones will also be masked because we need to be light with those. The mask will act as a way of varying the depth of the cracks. We'll make a color pass for each of those characteristics. As you can see, the roughness shows clearly and plays a good part in the render. The difficult part of this project will be the color pass and achieving a balanced layout of the different elements. I'll try to aim for a photorealistic render. Ok, let's go ahead and start with the base the blending of a simple tar and gravel. We can start our noise column by putting in two cells nodes, a cells 4 and a cells 2, blended with a multiplying mode. The cells 4 are in the foreground. We need a height scale in both, 240 in the cells 4 and 170 in the cells 2. Let's also increase the disorder in the cells 4. In the blend, keep a full opacity. Then, to make this more organic, a slope blur will do just fine. So let's bring in one, along with a fractal sum one. 32 samples, 0.02 intensity and min. Ok, better. Already it's looking like a good top, but it's not dense enough. The solution is simple. Take a height blend and a transform 2D. The latter one will be used as a slight offset. Put the slope output in the bottom and the transform in the top. Let's blend this with a tar substance. To make the tar, we can make use of the already existing fractal sum 1, blended with a black and white spot 2. For now, I'll push the scale to the max in this black and white spot 2. We'll try to optimize this later. And let's blend those two noises together with a height blend. Let's send this blended height to a histogram range with small values of 0.1 for the range and 0.3 for the position. And we can plug it in the bottom of a, of a height blend. In the top, we plug the gravel, but we can make it more unified by using a levels node. So let's decrease uh, the level out high at 0.76 and the level in mid at 0.42. Okay, better. Now it's time to build a simple worn out layer. We just add a slight variation to the base layer and min darken it with itself using a mask. That's uh, the concept. You can use a classic quattro to do that. Histogram scan, distance. An edge detect and a slope blur. In the histogram, just send the first slope blur output of the base layer. Position 0.5, contrast 0.75. This histo scan goes into the mask input of the distance. And in the source input, just send the same slope blur output. Maximum distance 256. In the edge detect, high tolerance. So a tol tolerance of 1. Edge width and uh, roundness at the minimum. In the slope blur, plug the black and white spots 2 in the slope. Uh, 
samples 32, intensity 0.01, and mod min. Okay, so let's proceed with the min darkened blend. 0.7 opacity. To be clean, we put the worn out layer in the foreground and the base layer in the background. As a mask, we can use a new noise, a black and white spot one, and send it to the opacity slot, but not before using a levels node to make it more focused. In these levels, we want a level in high of 0.62 and a level in mid of 72. Okay, so that's a good start. Now it's time to build good looking organic cracks in the asphalt. I think uh, the main techniques are gonna involve uh, an edge detect, a directional warp, and different kinds of blurs, and a new noise to start the sequence. So let's bring in our last noise, the cells one. Scale six, disorder one. Let's plug this noise to an edge detect. In the edge detect, we want a tolerance of 1, edge roundness 13, and width 1.7. Next in line is a non uniform blur. To me, I see this node as a mix between a blur and a directional warp. It's kind of both at the same time. Here are my settings, 27 intensity, degrees 135, the rest isn't touched. The blur map can be a blurred noise or a blurred output from your graph. In this case, I'll use the slope blur output of the worn out layer, which I will blur with a blur HQ, with an intensity of 3. Then, to make it look more organic even, we can use a directional warp with a relatively high intensity, 50 for example. A warp angle of 250 degrees. As the intensity input, we can use the black and white spots one. This one first goes through a blur, intensity 11. and a transform 2D. In this latter one, just divide the input by 2. So this goes into the intensity input of the directional warp. To finish our big cracks, we need some noise. A slope blur is what we need, again. So let's put the directional output into the grayscale input of the slope blur. In the slope, it would be nice to have something that comes from our asphalt layers. For example, we could take the output of the first blend node, the one that combined uh, the base layer and the worn out areas. It's the min darkened blend. Okay, let's use it. We'll just send it through a levels node first. Level in high, 0.43. Level in mid, 1. Now we need a transform. And multiply the levels output by 4. Plug the transform into the slope slot. To finish, we just have to find the right settings for the slope blur. Samples 32. Intensity 0.2 and mode blur this time because we don't want something too well defined. I, I don't want too sharp edges, so the blur mode is appropriate in this case. Okay, let's create a new blend node, min darken, 0.8 opacity. In the background, we call the previous blend, 
in the foreground the slope outputs, the cracks. Now I'd like to create a mask for our cracks because we don't want them everywhere. So we can build a quick sequence composed of a blur, a levels and a safe transform. In the blur, we plug the black and white spots 1 noise. The blur intensity, 14. In the levels, level in low, 0.27, level in high, 0.48, and level in mid, 0.49. The safe transform will just serve as an offset. So X.27 and Y.22. Our mask is done and it goes into the blend opacity. Well, I'd say that we have finished our grayscale height. The normal is there, ready. Intensity of 10. For the height, I like to place a blur node before the output, just to smooth things out. A 0.5 intensity would do just fine. We can also use a HBO node, 0.01 intensity. Now we have a better render. We can appreciate what we've done more precisely. What we need now is the diffuse and the roughness. The principle I'm going to follow for the color is just to give one gradient map for uh, each element of the texture. So we'll have a color for the final layer, one for the big cracks, one for the wear, and one for the top gravel. I would also like to bring some dirt marks in the center of the texture, and probably marks or stains of spilled product from trucks. We'll see what we can do. Let's begin from the normal. Usually I use a curvature, but this time I'd like to try with a normal to height HQ. It's expensive, but it brings much more details to the table. Let's plug it to a gradient map. We need a wide range uh, from dark to light grays. Let's do the same with lighter grays this time and the cracks. But first, we have to prepare the cracks for the color pass. We have to mask them and probably invert them and bring texture to them. It will make for a richer color pass. Let's go ahead and invert the cracks. Then I need a blend node, copy mode. In the foreground, we put the inverted cracks. And in the opacity, the cracks mask. Then I'd like to texture this result. So we can use another blend node, multiply. In the background and in the opacity, we can plug the previous blend output. And in the foreground, the output of the first blend node, you know, the one with which uh, we blended the, the wear and the base. Let's create a frame for that called cracks for color. And while we are at it, uh, let's create frames for everything we have so far. So, noises. Bass. wear or worn out area cracks cracks mask and color Then grab a gradient map, you want uh, light grays.
Then multiply blend node. Let's blend the first two gradient maps. So the cracks go into the foreground and in the background the gradient map we already did. And as a mask for them, we can use the first blend node in the cracks for color frame. Okay, time for a new gradient map. This time we'll colorize the wear. So it's just a basic gradient, we don't change anything. Let's use a new blend. This uh, new gradient goes into the foreground, the previous color blend into the background. And as a mask, we'll use the one we made before for this one out part. You know, it comes from a levels node. Now I take to colorize the gravel, the lighter ones, so very simple, a new basic gradient, and in the base frame just locate the transform node. We'll use this one as the input for the gradient. Then same process, a new blend, copy. Opacity 0.25, and let's just plug this colorized gravel into the foreground. In the background, the previous color blend. Okay, good progress. Let's work on the roughness to bring more details in the render. I'd like to start with a grunge map 15 and with a safe transform we could offset it a bit. 0.13 in the Y offset. Now let's isolate only a band in the middle, so you need a blend, multiply, and in the foreground just put a gradient linear 2. Tiling 3, rotation 90 degrees. To actually isolate the central part, there's a good and quick technique. Grab a copy blend node, put the previous blend in the foreground, and play with the cropping area. Right 0.68, left 0.32. Then let's just blur it, intensity of 10, and use the strong levels. Level in high 0.32, level in mid, same. 0.32 and then let's multiply these levels with the Grunge map at full opacity. Of course we have to take uh, the output from the safe transform. Now bring an invert and connect the normal to 8 HQ to it. Then it's just a matter of uh, blending it with our grunge decal. Let's use the screen mode. Now we need to grab a histogram range just to be able to make some changes in the roughness and plug it to the roughness output. Ok, 
Okay, good. That was a good thing to do. Roughness frame is needed, but don't forget it. Now let's go back to the color pass. So back in our color frame, another blend node, screen mode, 0.6 opacity. Of course we need a gradient map, we'll take our Grunge decal to it. This decal will also need to be connected to the blend opacity. It's going to be used as a mask also. And let's make a last detail. We'll use it as a color and as a roughness addition. Take a Grunge map 2. Balance 0.15 and contrast 0. Let's just up the details with a safe transform. Offset x.28 and y.47. Great. Then connect it to a gradient map. 4 to 6 gray values will be enough. And now we have to produce our last color blend. For the blending mode, choose the Add Linear Dodge, 0.66 opacity. Use the crunch as a mask also, taken from the Safe Transform output. And let's finish the roughness with this uh, additional detail. So let's add a Mask Lighten Blend node in the roughness frame. Just connect the safe transform output from the crunch 2. We are almost finished, but I'd like smaller cracks. In this new blend, choose Min Darken. In the foreground, just plug the cracks after the use of a safe transform. We just want a tiling of 3, X offset 0.33, Y 0.22, and a rotation of more than 100 degrees. 130 degrees could be, could be enough. As a mask, let's just use the cracks mask, but inverted. Because we don't want the smaller cracks to be at the same place as the big cracks. Okay, good. So now, if you remember, we need to optimize the black and white spots too. The scale made it too expensive. Sometimes you can just try to bring back the scale to 1 and see if it changes anything. In this case, the difference is slim. So let's keep the scale at 1. It's way cheaper that way. Let's head to the base frame and have a look at our blended height. To me it's blurry, so we should sharpen it a little. The standard value, uh, standard opacity of 1 will be good. Okay, in the black and white spots 1, I would just like to try uh, to set the disorder at 1 and the roughness at 0.6 uh, just, uh, just try to play with it I found it's a very important setting uh, this roughness 
in the black and white spots one. So I just take the time to see if I can change something more. For the color, we can use the PBR base color validate. As you can see, uh, we have red warnings. That means that we have values that are too dark, almost black. And in the PBR guidelines, that's something we want to avoid. You can simply make sure that your colors are valid by using the PBR Albedo Safe Color node. And if you want to learn more about PBR, I recommend uh, that you check out the guide published by Algorithmic. It's free and it's online. Okay, cool. To conclude this project, I'd like to say that the difficulty here is to get a good definition of the gravel and the details. When you work with rocks and stones, getting surface precision is tricky. You want to avoid blurriness, you want richness in the texture details. The sharpen node helped us achieve that. I like um, the central part with the brownish dirt and the light marks. Uh, as you can see, the sides have some glossiness. They are darker and more damaged. I imagine vehicles on the road and the wheels are wearing the sides. In the middle, we have more roughness because uh, maybe dirt uh, or some products just uh, spilled on the ground. At least we managed to create a bit of context with this texture. I guess a render in Marmoset would be quite good looking. And I should probably make a bonus video one day about uh, Marmoset rendering. Just let me know if that's something you'd like to see. Of course, it would be easier to judge this texture with more context. Um, the world borders, um, maybe more details, maybe painted signs on it. But here I just um, increased the tiling and we may have a better feel of it. Playing with the tiling option is uh, something I recommend uh, for you to better gauge your texture work. I wish you a good week. Godspeed and see you next Monday. Bye bye.